Hello, and welcome to a program information session for the George Brown College Dental Hygiene Program. My name is Joanna Isidorian, and I'm the program coordinator and professor in the Dental Hygiene Advanced Diploma Program. In this session, I'm going to provide an overall program overview, go over the admissions requirements, how to best ensure success in the program, provide information about the coursework and field experiences, along with reviewing some potential careers and future study options. I'll then close with some contact information. As you are well aware, we're all living in uncertain times. So please note that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our program delivery is still subject to change. Now our plan for this fall 2021 is to deliver theory classes online and pending public health requirements, we plan to hold preclinical and laboratory courses on site. We continue to be committed to delivering high quality teaching and supports to our students. The George Brown College Dental Hygiene Program has been training dental hygienists for over 40 years. The program is a three year, six semester full time program, and we have one intake per year in September. This is an advanced diploma and the program is accredited by the Commission of Dental Accreditation of Canada. The program aims to prepare students to work as primary oral health care providers in a relationship with their client, community and other health care providers. The program focuses on developing interpersonal communication skills, professionalism and the provision of dental hygiene care. In order to best ensure student success, we like our applicants to be aware that this is an academically rigorous program. Students must manage coursework and also their clinical clients. Students need to engage by participating and self-reflecting throughout the program. Applicants should also know that they're going to be working directly with people who will be undergoing what is sometimes stressful healthcare. The program has a heavy workload and students should minimize their part-time work obligations. In addition, students will require good language, verbal and comprehension skills. And finally, good manual dexterity is essential as a dental hygiene student and clinician. While some people naturally have good manual dexterity, you can build dexterity through activities like playing musical instruments, wood carving, jewelry making, sculpting, needlework, and drawing and painting, among other activities. Admissions to the dental hygiene program are based on your academic achievement, primarily on high school performance in grade 12 English, grade 11 or 12 math, grade 11 or 12 biology, and grade 11 or 12 chemistry or physics. Now, please note that the minimum grades you see here are just that, they're minimums. And typically admissions is very competitive for the dental hygiene program and successful applicants tend to have grades much higher than these minimums. Applicants can apply through, the, through OCAS at ontariocolleges.ca. Applicants should also submit all your post-secondary transcripts when applying as other coursework is considered in the application process. Now our first round of offers occurs in February and then in mid-May the second round offers are sent. Applicants have to confirm acceptance of an offer by the published deadline. As I mentioned previously, uh, grades often over 70% are in the required courses is recommended for applicants to not only be competitive in the application process, but also to better assure your success in the program. Those considering applying to the program may be interested in taking the one year pre-health program, which is offered through GBC to better build your math and science skills. And there's three different intakes for that program each year. February 1st, 2022 will be the next deadline for applications to the dental hygiene diploma program. So let's go through the program coursework. 
In year one, there are seven core courses in the fall semester, which include preclinical and lab courses. Students will also be assessed to determine if you will need to enroll in the foundational or college level English course. The winter semester also has seven core courses, again, including preclinical and lab courses. If you were required to take the foundational English in the first semester, you would now follow this with the college English course in second semester. Also take note there that uh, classes normally start at 8 a.m. and can go till 5 p.m. If students have an early morning preclinic or lab, you would need to be on site about 7.30 a.m. So just take note of that for your planning. Our program undergoes review and revising continually, so courses and their timing are subject to change. In the fall of second year, students again have seven core courses, including clinics and labs, and there are six core courses, including clinics and labs in fourth semester. And students may be required to attend evening clinics in the second and third years. In the final year of the program, in the fifth or fall semester, students have five core courses, including not only the clinics and labs, but also students will be taking part in field placements. In the final sixth semester, there are six core courses, clinics, labs, and the placements will continue. So in total, students should be prepared to be in class, clinics, or labs approximately 25 hours a week. So this is why I mentioned that you really need to limit your external work obligations. At George Brown College, we use the Blackboard Online Learning Management System for mostly all of our courses. Normally, courses are delivered in multiple formats, which could include face-to-face, -face, online, and blended deliveries. However, due to COVID, we're restricted in how much face-to-face -face learning can occur, and this will likely evolve over time. But regardless of this, students should also note that there are minimum requirements for your computer and technological needs, and we'll give you that information again upon acceptance. So students will be also required to take three general electives in addition to those core courses. And one of these may be mandatory. Field placements within our community health partner institutions, as I mentioned, takes part in second and third years. But these two are undergoing changes as we respond to public health restrictions. During the program, if a student has individual learning needs, they can contact our accessible learning services. We also have student success specialists that support our first year students as they adjust to the rigors of college education. As students progress through the dental hygiene program, various interpro interprofessional experiences become available. And some of these may include students working with the nursing students, fitness and health promotion students, denturism, dental assisting, and dental technology students. While there are some current restrictions due to COVID-19, some of the field experiences that students may take part in include placements at Mount Sinai Hospital, Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center, CAMH, Toronto Rehab, Baycrest, Regent Park, West End Oral Health Clinic, and Public Health Ontario. In addition, we also periodically offer international placements, and some of our students have taken part in going to Jamaica for field experiences. Potential applicants should be aware that they will undergo an English placement test to determine whether they are required to take that foundational in English course in addition to the required college English course. And as I mentioned, strong English writing and comprehension are really required in order to be successful in the program. Students will also need to complete a vulnerable person's police check in order to attend classes and external placements. And this is renewed annually. 
Other program requirements include the completion of a health passport. So accepted students will be given instructions for this in the summer before the fall semester, usually in early to mid-July, in order to ensure that you have ample time to complete this. So this will uh, ensure that students have all their up-to-date required vaccinations, which includes hepatitis B. Additionally, students will need to have a TB skin test and complete their CPR and basic first aid. And the passport is also renewed annually. Students will also need to have a mask fit test prior to their second and third year clinics. Applicants should be aware that graduates from the program are eligible to write the National Dental Hygiene Certification Board exam. And successful completion of this exam is required for provincial registration as a dental hygienist across Canada. Now, take note that there's also some slight variations in scope of practice. In other words, what dental hygienists can do across the country. For example, in some provinces like in BC, Alberta, and Manitoba, dental hygienists are permitted with the appropriate training to administer local anesthetic. So if you're interested in potentially registering outside of Ontario, you can contact the specific regulatory body in those other provinces. George Brown College dental hygiene graduates are well respected within the oral health care sectors and our grads find employment in various settings, including in private dental clinics, community health settings, in long term care institutions and with industry and government institutions. Some graduates from the Advanced Diploma Program will also seek out advanced education opportunities, and some will complete degree completion programs, which can then potentially position a graduate for additional career options and also for graduate education. So if you would like more information about the George Brown College Dental Hygiene Program, we welcome you to visit our dental hygiene program page at georgebrown.ca backslash S134. You can also reach out to our program support officer, Chin Yang, at qyang at georgebrown.ca. Thank you for attending our information session. I hope it was valuable and I wish you all the best in your future studies.